Let's go back to one of my favorite whipping boys, the indoctrination system. They're really hurting right now. The public side of the indoctrination system, pretty much K through 12, they are desperate because uh, they locked, they shut everything down because of the beer virus. Kids are staying home. They announced they weren't reopening. And uh, now they're in this really awkward position of doing remote learning. And this comes with some problems. Like we already covered the previous incident. Teachers were conspiring on Twitter about what the best ways they can continue indoctrinating kids into their religion is without the parents noticing. Because, oh my God, the parents might actually be in the room. Oh my God, the parents might hear what we're indoctrinating their kids with. How do we prevent this? Now we have uh, this, because uh, as more chillins learn from home, the state is cracking down on, quote-unquote, virtual truancy. They're using your kids as a weapon against you. They know damn well that if they hold kids hostage, parents will have to bend the knee, because uh, what parent worth their salt won't sacrifice anything for their kids, right? So these guys... They know they are in a very real danger of more parents pulling out and just homeschooling their kids once they realize how fucking worthless the public indoctrination system really is. Especially when they see the kind of stuff they've been uh, brainwashing these kids with. Like, wait, wait, wait. I thought kids were, I thought they were going to school to learn important skills, not be indoctrinated into being a left wing activist. What the hell is this? We were supposed to not teach religion in public schools anymore, but uh, that only applies to right-wing religions. Left-wing religion is apparently okay. So these schools are desperate to hold on to what little power they have left. They don't know what they're going to do if parents keep pulling their kids out. But for now, they are uh, going to remote learning and they are doing this whole virtual truancy thing. They're, so even if you as a parent understand how worthless the public indoctrination system is, you're still required to force your poor kids to sit through this shit for six plus hours a day. Because if you don't, the government's going to send CPS to confiscate your kids from you. Start putting in your homeschooling applications ASAP. I can guarantee you now, you could homeschool your kid for one day one day of the week, just focusing on all the important stuff, and they will be ahead of everyone going through the public indoctrination system. Because most of the public system right now is all about uh, pushing ideology and creating activists. If you just focus on the important stuff, your kids will be passing those tests with flying colors. As remote learning creates more distance between school districts and students, school and state officials are clinging to control however they can. Because that's all it's about. It's never been about what's best for the child. It's about how can we use these kids to manipulate the parents while also brainwashing these kids to be future drones. From sending child protective service agents to investigate uh, charges of neglect in homes when children missed uh, Zoom classes last spring, to proposing child well-being checks in homes this fall, all right, so because the kids aren't in school, because they're spending too much time with their parents, we need to do well-being checks on kids. How about we do the opposite? How about parents should be allowed to just randomly show up to their public the, the public schools their kids are in without any advance notice or nothing? Parents should legally be allowed to just walk into the school and into the classroom and see what their kids are being taught. How about we do child welfare checks on the indoctrination system? How about we let parents know exactly what's being done to their kids in these fucking systems? Oh, no, no, it doesn't work that way. No, parents aren't allowed to do that. But us, we are allowed to, to snoop in on what the parents could be doing. Government schools and related agencies are panicking over parents having increased, increased influence over the kids' care and education during the pandemic. Translation... Oh, shit, our, our fucking brainwashing is going to wear out if these goddamn parents keep getting in our way. The front page article in the uh, Boston Sunday Globe days ago describes the experiences of several parents who were interrogated by CPS agents last spring when their children missed remote classes or failed to submit homework assignments amidst the pandemic-related school shutdowns. 
Some parents didn't have internet access and were blindsided by the CPS investigations of virtual truancy. One Latina mother uh, featured in the Globe story is uh, M. Quiles, who, like many parents last spring, scrambled to care for her children and continue to work during the tremendous upheaval and uncertainty. Yeah, so I would say plan now. If you're a single mother, you're kind of fucked. But if, you, if it's a two-parent household, plan for one or both parents taking time off work to raise your kids. Because guess what? That's what you should be doing in the first place. That's what humanity should be doing. I mean, fuck it. If it wasn't for the fact that my parents actually taught me important things, if, if all I had to go on is what the public indoctrination system drilled into me, I'd be fucked right now. I would be such a failure. So parents, you owe it to your kids. So according to the Globe, then in June, Quillis was uh, stunned to receive a call from the State Department of Ch Children and Families, which, by the way, is just a fucking extortion racket. They usually go after people they think they can extort for money. The school had uh, accused Quillis of neglect, she was told, because her seven-year-old missed classes and homework assignments. I couldn't believe it, she said. Quillis lived in one of the worst uh, nightmares for a parent. A neglect charge, if substantiated, can lead to removing a child from their home. And then uh, these children that the government takes from their parents will promptly be placed e either into like some fucking like foster home or some orphanage or no, not an orphanage, really, but uh, some some child care facility along those lines where they will actually be neglected. But since it's the government, nothing you can do about it. While most of the parents featured in the Globe story were ultimately exonerated, previous interactions with CPS, even if unfounded, can act as a scarlet letter for parents, haunting them for years to come. This is true. More troubling, parents singled out for CPS enforcement are dip disproportionately low income and minority, often lacking the resources to defend themselves against government overreach. Now, this right here, this is a brilliant tactic. Use their own discrimination tactics against them. Like, oh, we're going to use CPS to force you to keep indoctrinating your kids into our religion. It's like, okay, fine. We're going to say CPS is racist then. According to The Globe, most of the families caught up in the remote learning allegations are Latino or Black, groups that are likely to be overrepresented in state foster care at all times. Brilliant fucking move, I will say. Brilliant move. Use their own more racist, like the ism phobia accusations against them. School districts across the country have a history of activating CPS against parents who stray from a district's command and control. An in-depth current year minus two investigative report by the uh, Heckinger Report and uh, Huffington Compost revealed that schools increasingly use child protective services as a weapon against parents, especially parents who lack the means to fight back. That is all CPS has ever been. A fucking weapon to keep parents in line and, and extort money out of those they can. Because because once again, those of you who are parents, you already know this, but those of you who aren't, just imagine you were and uh, the government was basically saying either you obediently do everything we tell you or we're going to take your kid from you. Now, being separated from their kids is like the worst thing that can happen to a parent. So before this happens to you, before they have a chance to catch you in this shit, Pull your kids out and homeschool them. Or at the very least, find some private charter school you can send them to. It's going to be too late. I mean, if you wait until CPS comes after you, it's already too late. Now, truancy has long been a trigger for CPS investigations, and now virtual truancy seems poised to accelerate the practices during the pandemic. This is particularly concerning because just in a just as in typical truancy cases, virtual truancy is often prompted by factors other than parental neglect. Special needs students and students with disabilities or health conditions may have more school absences, and they may find virtual learning to be uniquely challenging. A current year minus one HuffPost article titled The Human Costs of Kamala Harris's War on Truancy found that strict truancy laws and enforcement terrorized families with parents being pulled out of their homes in handcuffs and sent to jail. Yeah, that that's sure as hell going to be good for the kid, right? Like the parents are already struggling to make ends meet. So you just arrest the parents. Yeah, the kid will be fine on their own without parents. Yeah, just completely upend these kids' lives. That's totally going to have a positive impact on them in the future. 
Cherie Peoples, one of the parents spotlighted in the uh, Huffington Compost piece, whose daughter missed school frequently due to sickle cell anemia, was uh, awakened in the early hours by police officers who arrested her for truancy. She told the Huffington Compost, you would swear I had killed somebody. Yup. Meanwhile, I mean, they stand down for burn, loot, murder. But if your kid misses too many days of school, they will send the fucking SWAT team to arrest your ass. Priorities, maybe? The Huffington Compost article revealed that uh, then-Democratic presidential candidate and now presumptive Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, yeah, or Heels Up Harris, was responsible for much of the heightened aggression towards parents regarding truancy. As California's attorney general, Harris acted, or Harris was a crusader against truancy and was instrumental in toughening criminal prosecution of parents whose children missed too much school. The state needs to make damn sure that their kids are getting their daily dose of indoctrination because the indoctrination may start wearing off if kids are exposed to the real world for too long. Can't have that. Can't have actually intelligent, well-rounded, free thinkers in this country. They all have to be indoctrinated. According to Huffington Compost, uh, Harris persuaded the state legislature to adopt harsher penalties for truancy. Under the new law, the parent or guardian of a young truant child could face a fine of uh, $2,500 or more or one year in jail. So $2,500 is not that much if you're like upper middle class. But if you are in, if you're living in, at or below the poverty line, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, what the fuck are the odds that you're going to come up with a random $2,500 laying around? Now, Harris pushed hard for the law as she has, as she was running for attorney general, and it passed just as she won the election. We're putting parents on notice, Harris said, at her current year minus nine inauguration. How about the parents get together now and say, we're putting the public indoctrination system on notice. We're pulling our kids out of this shit. Now, you know, when too many parents pull their kids out and start homeschooling, the government is going to move to ban homeschooling because uh, this has never been about the best interests of the child. It's all about protecting government power and control over their future tax slaves. That's all it's ever been. That's all it is right now. That's all it ever will be. So while you still have the chance, before they put up even more roadblocks, if you're a parent, pull your kids out of this indoctrination system as soon as fucking possible. Now, criminal investigations of child neglect tied to virtual truancy are set to skyrocket this fall as school districts across the country adopt remote learning plans. Worried that parents can't be trusted to care for their own children. Yeah, it has to be these teachers who, by the way, most of which failed into that profession. Yeah, they're more qualified to care for your kids than you are. That's what they're saying. Some indoctrination officials have proposed large-scale child well-being checks by government agents. They're trying to create more diversity hire jobs because you know they're going to hire like useless grievance studies and social work degree holders to do this. Earlier this month, the Tennessee Department of Indoctrination announced that it would be performing these well-being checks on children across the state. This plan created such an uproar among Tennessee parents and conservative lawmakers that the proposed initiative was withdrawn and its guidelines removed from the Indoctrination Department's website. Yeah, this public outrage works. If the government is overreaching and is trying to take your kids from you, honestly, as a parent, what do you have to lose at that point when you're at the point where the government is trying to take your kid away? All bets are off at that point. You may as well fight back as hard as you can. Despite the immediate victory, all parents should remain on alert. Exactly. If you're not on alert, they will try to sneak this through. They will probably attach this to some other unrelated law. School and state officials aided by high-profile academics will likely seek to increase CPS involvement in family affairs during remote learning and beyond. Elizabeth Bartlett, the Harvard Law School professor who made headlines last spring when she called for a uh, presumptive ban on homeschooling. Yep, and this is the person I quoted in an earlier article on an earlier stream who admitted that she's afraid that parents are going to pull their kids out of the indoctrination system because they're going to see how fucking horrible it is and their kids weren't learning shit. They'll see that the system is way worse than they believed it was. 
spoke out uh, last week in favor of increased CPS action this fall in an interview with Harvard Law Today. Bartholet said, my overall general recommendation is that indoctrinators and CPS agencies need to recognize the level of problem that kids at home are now facing in terms of risk of both uh, indoctrination and maltreatment and come up with some creative new solutions. So uh, when can we finally address the problem of, like, say, widespread bullying in these public indoctrination systems and how the teachers never do anything? If you're being bullied and you report it, you're more likely to be punished than your bully. And then your bully's going to know you tattled and he's going to go even harder on you. In the interview, Bartholet acknowledged the heightened interest in independent homeschooling as more parents choose to forgo district learning this fall and uh, consider separating from their school district going forward. Yeah, it's almost as if you know that uh, the mask is coming off. People can see the bullshit. According to Bartholet, roughly 3% of the population is now homeschooled. Let's say it increases to 6% post beer virus. Legislators and other policymakers may look at that and say, wow, this is now this is a big phenomenon. It may continue to grow, of course. Of course, it shouldn't uh, be just this uh, lawless world out there with no rules and regulations and oversight. Of course, it should be part of the overall regulated indoctrination system. Uh huh. It's all about the government having power and control over you. The fact that the government feels it is their right to regulate your family life should be concerning. At the time this country was founded, if they tried this shit, they, this would be over in one night because all the agents they're sending out to do this would not come back home, let's just say. But right now, people just bend over and take it. Like, yeah, sure, you can have my kid. I'm a good citizen. I didn't do nothing. I'll prove my loyalty. You can have my firstborn as a sacrifice to prove how loyal I am to you, daddy government. As I've written previously, homeschooling should not be part of the overall regulated indoctrination system. It is a form of private education that is separate and uh, distinct from state schooling. And many parents are now finding that they prefer homeschooling over other indoctrination options. Parents are pulling their children out of school this fall in record numbers, dissatisfied with school reopening plans amid the greater indoctrinational freedom and uh, flexibility. So many parents submitted online intent to homeschool forms in North Carolina last month that it crashed the state's non-public indoctrination website. Perhaps not surprisingly, a recent report by law professor at North Carolina's Duke University called for greater regulation and oversight of the state's growing ranks of homeschoolers. Now, they're doing this for completely selfish reasons because uh, the, the indoctrinators themselves know they're going to be out of a job. So they say, oh, well, we're going to have to insert ourselves into the homeschooling uh, thing somehow or else we'll be unemployed. Like, oh, I know the government never shies away from grabbing more power. Yeah, let's just suggest the government grab more power. Let's convince them that it's their right to regulate people's family lives. As parents pull away from state-controlled indoctrination and assume greater responsibility for their children's learning, the state will hasten efforts to maintain and expand its authority through its monopoly on the use of force. Yeah, that, that's something I always bring up, too. The same people who are like, oh, violence is never the answer, guys. We can't even suggest violence because then we lose. Well, you realize the state maintains its power over you by threatening to send thugs to your house to arrest you and lock you in a cage if you don't do what they say, right? You realize, uh, what the fuck do you think the police are? These, these people just don't get anything. From virtual truancy claims to increase CPS investigations that disproportionately target poor parents and families of color to calls for child well-being checks and more homeschooling regulations, the state will not willingly yield control of uh, children's indoctrination to parents. Yeah, they, they know that uh, if they can't indoctrinate the next generation of obedient tax slaves, they, they risk having a generation of uh, of young adults that will actually question government authority as opposed to keep bending over. See, the millennial generation just bends over to anyone they view as an authority figure. They don't want another rebellious generation. Parents should strongly reject these heavy-handed efforts to interfere with family life during and after the pandemic. Yeah, like we saw in that Tennessee example. If every single fucking voter, if every single parent rose up against this, they will back down and be especially vigilant about helping low-income and minority parents resist as well. Minimizing state power while maximizing individual liberty is the hallmark of a free society. 
Agreed. Now more than ever, parents are exercising and securing their freedom to raise and educate their children as they choose. Parents may have been put on notice, but they are pushing back and opting out. Yeah, time to put the public indoctrination system and the government on notice. Remember, you ultimately get to vote. If these politicians decide to ram through these laws that make it okay for them to meddle in your family life, you get to vote them out. And if you if they do this and you don't vote them out, you deserve everything you get. You get no sympathy. But otherwise, this is the state of public indoctrination in the U.S. right now. And this isn't even the worst of it. More on that to come soon. Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.